84 degrees. Gorgeous day here in Fayetteville, Arkansas. Second game of the two-game midweek set between the Red Raiders of Texas Tech and the number two team in the country, the Arkansas Razorbacks. This is the SEC on the SEC Network. And alongside Kyle Peterson, I am Carl Ravitch. They have been number one for the prior five weeks after losing two of three to Alabama, including getting shot out on Sunday. Arkansas drops to two. What you see is the SEC domination at the top of the rankings with A&M, Arkansas, Kentucky, and Tennessee. It's SEC and ACC as we welcome you inside our booth. That's Kyle Peterson, and I'm Carl Ravitch. A great atmosphere here last night. It's a tough one for Texas Tech. They had 13 hits and eight runs and, and somehow lost, which was a tribute to Arkansas's ability to keep fighting. Well, and Tech jumped out to a six-run lead. I mean, when you have a situation like that, an Arkansas offense that at least historically isn't necessarily one that's going to score them in bunches, well, they did. They came back against the Tech bullpen and then ultimately walked off Tech. And we talked about it yesterday. If Tech can get one of two here, that works. Yeah. I mean, if you go on the yeah. road against a team like this, it's, it's going to boost it, but they've – Got their hands full today to do it. It's rare. Second loss this season when they scored eight or more. You have to go back to a Texas game in which they were drugged 22 to eight. You talk about Texas Tech, though. We mentioned their offense. And last night, Austin Green put on a show. He was only five for five, raised his batting average 31 points. Only five for five. Four singles and a home run last night for this Texas Tech offense that still is without Damian Bravo, who has been their best offensive performer all year. But you wouldn't have known it yesterday. It was power up and down. Cade McGee was on base again, which he tends to do. And today they're going to face a freshman left-hander who has got a chance to push into the weekend rotation next year. And that's Colin Fisher, and he's thrown a pitch, and it's wide ball one. Fisher's been great his last two starts. Limited to 60 to 65 pitches generally, but he's gotten five scoreless his last two times out. Swing and a miss from Gavin Cash. He's the DH today, a junior 6'3", 210. He had a couple of hits last night. And a couple of changes in each lineup, and that one is way inside, brushed him back. Fisher has started six games. He's made nine appearances in 23 innings, 18 hits, five. Chase the slider away. He's gone. Back-to-back -back innings with the leadoff man leaving the building. Arkansas 2, Tech 1. Double from Austin Green, now six for his last six. And we'll start with nine, Will Burns, and then back to the top of the order. That's some pretty good matchups this weekend, Rav. A&M, Alabama, A&M, new number one team in the country. How about Kentucky? 14-1 to start the year in the first half of the SEC, and the Vols will head to Lexington. Kentucky's been special. Then Jones' team has played great. One loss, leading their division. Texas Tech will head home, and they get the Mountaineers. West Virginia coming to Lubbock this weekend. J.J. Weatherholt is back in that lineup. Weatherholt should be a first-round pick, so that they, changes West Virginia. I didn't read that he re-injured himself, did he? 
He missed some time. No, no, but I mean like last night. Uh, I did not see that. He was in the lineup. I guess maybe let's say that. Fish who just missed. I have not seen word either. Travis Bazana got a hit with a pitch yesterday. And had a soft cast on of the dugout at the back. One hops out and gives the Red Raiders a lead back. Austin Green, can he keep it going? Well, he tried there. First pitch, he swings and fouls it back. So we talked with Matt Hobbs before the game yesterday about the value of a midweek series against a team like Texas Tech. And he said, well, we really want to figure out just kind of how tough we are. We, we think we're tough, but we want to learn. I figured last night was a big positive step in that direction. But you're going to be tested. You know, your pitching staff is going to be tested against an offense like this. It happened last night. It's happening again today. You agree? Is there something to be taken from a series like this, even when you're getting beaten around a little yeah, bit? It's a regional setting. Yeah. I mean, you're facing a team that's going to be in a regional unless something changes. Latest D1 projections came out today for the postseason. Had Texas Tech as a three seed going to Wake and Arkansas a top eight national seed. But Tech's got a chance to move that number over the next three, four weeks. You get West Virginia. They still have to go to Stillwater. One grabs the other. One jumps on his back. And finally one guy up and grabs him by the throat and brings him down. That's how they hunt. That's how they survive. That's how they eat. That's how our offense has to work against Megan Smith. Just went all wolf analogy. It's a good plan. The, the problem is nobody's really been able to do that consistently to Hagen Smith this year. Nine starts, 47 innings, 89 strikeouts. He's walked just 17 and an ERA in the mid ones. We'll have to ask him if he ever felt like there was a threat from the wolf when he was on the mound. Matt Gardner out to pitch a coach at Texas Tech, and the longest outing of the year for Hudson Parker was two and a third. That was his last time out. In that one, went 57 pitches, so pitch count still a little bit below that right now. He's only given up two hits, just both have been solo home runs. Looks like Brandon Lysak may be up one of the lefties in that bullpen. Meeting one on the mound for Hudson Parker. Stovall reaches for the second time, the homer and the walk, and here comes Peyton Holt with one down, trailing two to one here in the bottom of the third. Two games set, Texas Tech heads back to Lubbock after this one. South Carolina on the docket for R5 Burns and Poppy to turn their second double play. Hagen Smith will join us when we come back. So outrage is all the rage. You were uh, being attacked by wolves in Alabama. <laughs> no, no. I mean, I mean, they're a good offense. They had a really good approach all weekend. Uh, 
they didn't really swing anything in the dirt, so I mean they just got on top of our fastball. And I think they played really good. So you threw a lot more cutters in that game than sliders, right? And and that was a different approach. T talk about your development here as we stare out at the the Hunt Family Development Center and all the tools you have. Give us a little peek because we're going to be talking about you draft day about the way you've grown as both a pitcher and a person. Yeah, it's awesome here. I mean, when I came here as a freshman, I was tiny. Uh, I mean, I wasn't tiny, but. Came a long way, you know, just getting in the weight room. Coach uh, Coach Bell came in here last year and kind of got after it. I mean, came down, settled with the plan, and then we just kind of executed it. It was awesome. I was talking to Matt Hobbs a few weeks ago, and, and he was talking about your summer last year when you got back from Team USA um, and the commitment to the weight room and everything else since then. How do you think that's made you better, and how are you different this year than you were last year? Yeah, I think the weight room has helped for my mechanics, honestly, just getting my, using my legs more. Uh, I know I had a hard time last year. I kept getting out of my legs when I was going down the mound. So this year just kind of helps me hold my ground a little better. All right. I'm more interested in what you're doing to get big because I, I saw the whole nutrition center. Like, what, what do you bury? What do you eat? What, what's your game plan? <laughs> uh, I don't know. I kind of cook a lot. So, you cook a lot? Yeah, I try to. All right. So, I mean, if, if you got one thing, like your favorite thing you're going to make, where are we going? Oh, uh, me personally, maybe a steak. Yeah. yeah. All right, so now we get—we really get really got to get to brass tacks here. So when you cook a steak, how do you like it? Medium rare. I know. Yeah, boy. boom. There you go. Got a boy. Right. Correct answer. You're talking to two guys Perfect. up here that really enjoy it kind of bleeding a little bit. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Got to. Hey, kind of dorky pitching stuff here, but what, what is it between starts? What, what is, what's your process? What's it look like from last week until getting you to Friday? Uh, I threw a bullpen yesterday, uh, just kind of like 15, 10 pitches. I mean, 15, 20 pitches. Uh, I don't use TrackMan or anything during my midweek bullpens because we get a big report from everything we do over the weekend. So I did then today. Well, I, threw, I actually lifted yesterday after my bullpen. So today off and then tomorrow off in the way. Yeah. That's the ones at third base, but you just got to go get it until somebody yells at you. Um, so the left side of your infield, I mean, both kids from Hawaii, obviously Aloy the transfer and Sousa the freshman. Sousa goes deep today. Talk about those guys, because Sousa to me looks like, well, both of them, but Sousa looks like the upside's through the roof. Yeah, I mean, it's it's really cool having both guys from Hawaii on the same team and playing a lot together. Sousa, I mean, you just look at him, he looks like a big leaguer, so he mean, and Vihiva, too. You got a long ways to go with them, so it's going to be awesome they can stay here for a few more years, or a couple for Vihiva. Has there been an invite yet? Yeah. You got to, like, mix in Thanksgiving over there or something. <laughs> yeah, I asked Vihiva about it. He's my locker mate, so... I want to go bad. Never been. So you asked him what, what was the answer? Yes. <laughs> That's good. I go stay with him or something. Think I can stay with you? Eh, I don't know. <laughs> we'll see. Hagan Smith joining us here with uh, two down. Infield single there for Washburn. Will Burns singled his first time up the other way. And this one is rolled foul. Tell me what you think the potential for the club is. What you think they need to kind of improve on, work on in order to peak. I just think staying consistent. I mean, for our team, we just gotta show up to the yard every day. I mean, it's hard to it's hard to do. It sounds easy when I say it, but show up every day and try to win every single game. Talk again, uh, probably, hopefully, in Omaha for your sake, and certainly around the draft as sure, well. Thank you. All. All Thanks, right. man. That's Hagen Smith. Bottom fourth coming up. Hogs coming up.
Do you think about that at all? Omaha, homers. Man, yeah, it's it's a good environment. You know, it's uh, back in 16 and uh, 14. It's a good environment. Like teams get better, any team gets better deep in the season and uh, start playing really good baseball, and it's it's tough. It's tough. So whenever you get there, you know uh, you're facing teams that play clean baseball and and try to win, try to go pitch to pitch. So Eric, for you, you get a chance to play pro ball afterwards, then make the decision to to come back, and and you've you've been on the coaching side here for for a few years now. What's that transition like? How's it how's it been? What have you enjoyed? Maybe what's been difficult. I think uh, the the difficult part was, you know, trying to start coaching and and uh, hang them up. But uh, other than that, it, everything's been fun, honestly. Uh, trying to be around the guys and and share experiences and stuff like that, and it, it's it's a uh, it's pretty special. Brendan Lysick, the new pitcher for Texas Tech, seems to be an offense. We saw it last night that can put up a bunch of runs. When you look at a team. Relative to what you guys accomplished years ago and getting to Omaha, what are some of the things that you think has to happen in order for that to happen for this group? I think it's just pretty much, uh, like I said, just learning how to go pitch to pitch, you mm -hmm. know, learning how to go pitch to pitch and enjoying the process, and the outcome will be there. Sometimes uh, any team can get focused on the outcome, uh, but if you focus on the process, the outcome will be there. Eric Gutierrez, the director of operations, if there are people watching, may wonder, what does the director of operations do? What are your responsibilities? <laughs> a lot of operation here and there, <laughs> man. It's a uh, uh, travel, itinerary, hotel, any, anything you can think of outside of, outside of the coaching part, you know, it's uh, that's what the special op ops is doing. <laughs> are, you, are, you, are you like the player concierge? Like, are you the guy that takes care of these things? Man, you know, they take care of me. <laughs> Does that no. mean you get you get the best room? Does uh, that work out that way to where you, you can just get you, the suite set aside every time? You can, you can, you know. But I, I try Perks. to just get a regular room and uh, and keep it simple. Makes a tough play. <laughs> it's it's in it. It's a it's Wally's world. It's adventure up there, man. Not comfortable when it goes up in the air. No matter how deep it is. I've seen one drop. Just outside of the infield dirt. Woodcox maybe thought this ball was going to go a little bit further than it did, too. He ended up about on a dead spread, having to come in and catch it. So, leadoff walk, going to hit by pitch. Now two flyouts. Lovich with two down. And again, Arkansas has been terrific with two outs, almost a 300 team batting average. McLaughlin is out there at second base, and that's a good one in there with a slider to get ahead 0 and 1. Seventeen inches of horizontal break on it. Pulled the fastball. Initially, Lysick, first two guys, the walk, the hit batter, like the body language was kind of heading sideways, and then all of a sudden he found it and got Souza a huge out. And Wagner. And now as he got Poppy feet on the outfield grass at second base, and that just missed. Isaac locks in. Nothing across. We're through four. 3 2, Texas Tech.
Parker on the mound as we begin the fifth inning with Texas Tech up by a run. Hudson Parker out for the Red Raiders. Three innings, two earned, two Ks. Kevin Bissell provided a couple of RBIs on a double. Meantime, Fisher is out of the game now for Arkansas, and it's Cody Frank. He'll be making his 15th appearance. He had been pretty solid in his last outing against Alabama on the 14th. A little bumpy, one and a third. He gave up two hits, two earned runs. So the righty will take the baseball and try to keep this score right where it is at three to two. And Frank will be dealing with the top of the order for the Red Raiders. So Smith had Tommy John surgery back in 2019. I know before the game you were talking with uh, one of the guys from Texas Tech about injuries. Sunday night we did a whole thing about pitchers' injuries. It used to be you have one Tommy John and you're done. Now it feels like there's almost this concept. If you have one, there's a real good chance if it's early in your career, you're going to have another one. It doesn't guarantee that that first one works or lasts. There's a lot of guys that have had two. No, I mean, if, if I don't think it's this simple, but I think it's a major part of the equation. If you go look at average fastball velocity now and go look at average fastball velocity, oh. I mean, even 10 years ago, 20 years ago, it's going to be a massive difference. But even 10 years ago, the reality is. And the frequency of those. Yeah, it's, it's just it's the stress that's put on arms, both from a max effort standpoint and just the the velocity the guys are throwing now is, is different than it's ever been historically. So I, I, I think it's realistic to assume that there's going to be more injuries because it's harder on your body. Souza moves into the shift position now between short and second. Hard hit. Nice play. Jones is okay. He's saying to the home plate umpire wagers he is. And you have got to go through the questions, the protocol, and everything when something like that happens. So Dave Van Horn will take Jones out of the game and Wilmsmeyer will come in to pinch run for him. And again, on the surface appears like he's okay, but given the situation and the importance of Jones, no reason to no. risk it. No, not in a midweek game right there, right? That's a tough spot as a hitter too, because 3-0, I mean, you're dialed up. If he's got the green light, he's dialed up to go after a fastball and tough to get back into kind of a defensive position. Seem to be moving around all right, but no reason to push it. Now batting for the Razorbacks, number 44, Parker Rowland. After that pitch, quickly the Texas Tech bullpen gets rolling again. They had. Yeah, everybody's sitting down. But Cole Case drills Jones in the head with a pitch. Right, you know, Tim Tadlock was having a couple of words with the home plate umpire, perhaps to let him know what he's trying to do. Looks like Case going to stay in to deal with Parker Rowland, and now it doesn't look that way. That was the message to Wager. So I'm going to get him out, but I got to get my guy warm. We don't want any more of that. I 
I don't know if they're making a change. Yes, they are. It's kind of a pitching change block right there. Stopped huffling mid trot in from left field bullpen, and then ultimately Mark Wager's own plate umpire said, come on in. I'm quite sure exactly what that back and forth was. But the left-hander's coming in. Should we take a break? Yeah. Yeah. I think we've had we'll do that. Pay some bills. Protocol. I like where you're at. Yeah. 6.06 here in Arkansas. Time out on the field. would have to did you snap a picture of yourself with the beer hat yeah i'm a big selfie guy you know that i do um, i do you and eduardo but no i i avoided that one i did wear it though it fits you did you look in the mirror i did yeah i thought so he's kind of walked around for a while <laughs> pump yourself up a little bit arkansas man, hospitality good. give it up for them they uh they rally talk about rally caps they rally with two beer hats last night I and mean, it would be making the jaunt home to omaha and uh florida and will absolutely be worn at every opportunity. Just put on and let other people look and be jealous. Don't say a word. Yep. No explanation needed. If you know, you know. There's, there's one right there behind him. Yep. Talking about that beer hat right behind you. Grab it. Grab the hat. He will when they're loaded. We got one on right now. Huffling will deal to Parker Rowland with nobody out in the bottom of the seventh. Birds from the pitcher over to the bench, Texas Tech, Stone Hewlett. Not sure what that was about or why it was necessary, but Hewlett gets the strikeout. Arkansas sweeps the two games set. They win it today, five to four. Well, yesterday was a comeback in Arkansas's bullpen that kept him in it. Today it was a little bit more workmanlike. More like you've seen Arkansas win a lot of games this year. Two one-run games between two teams that are pretty familiar with the postseason. Texas Tech with some work to do to ensure that they're in. They would be as of now, but Arkansas just strengthens that resume the last two days. Now 32 and 5 overall. 12 and 3 in the SEC as they head to South Carolina this weekend. And they have now won 25 straight games here at Baum Walker. 25 in a row. They add to the record at this field for consecutive games in a row that they have won. That was a little guns up to him over there. I didn't see much chirping back and forth until right then, but a little something to finish after giving up the home run. Stone Hewlett, a bunch of breaking balls to finish off Bohm and finish off this series. Good game for Peyton Stovall and the rest of the Hogs. They hang on and win it 5-4. We hope to talk with him when we come back.
Uncle Sam, I'm trying to figure out what hours you putting in over here on my job. You clocking in and doing real labor. I'm getting tired of every time my check come out, boy, you got your cut coming out like, hey, yeah, this the little cut going over here to Uncle Sam. What the fuck? Take my tax dollars and then you want to send them overseas to another motherfucker who don't even give a damn about the country. Then you got all these illegals coming in and they able to get 12000 a month. 12000 a month? Man, man, I ain't making 12000 a month. I need to get that bread back, man. Y'all need to cut more than what y'all cutting at tax time. I ain't lying, bro. That's some bullshit. The fuck I need to pay you taxes at the end of the year for you taking it all year? You're taxing everything. I mean, damn, bro. Cut a motherfucker a break. Your ass finna be messed up fooling around me, bro. I'm finna start telling you to chow ass up. What's going on, everybody? Welcome back to the 1521 Corner. Look, I'm just going to say this real quick. Man, look, don't label me no Democrat. Don't label me no Republican. I'm going to be like T-R-U-M-P. I'm all about common sense. If you want to sit there and talk to me and say it's more than two genders, we ain't got nothing to talk about. If you think it's cool for boys to go in women's bathroom, we ain't got nothing to talk about. If you call women sis, women, we definitely ain't got nothing to talk about. If you think it's cool that men competing in women's sports, we ain't got nothing to talk about. If you think the country doing better than what they was four years ago, we definitely ain't got nothing to talk about. If you don't understand that the border getting overrun, surely ain't got nothing to talk about. And last but not least, if you think the economy doing good right now, man, show ass up. Joe just be lying, saying anything to try to stay in that office, ain't it? Welcome back to the 1521 Corner, everybody. So old Joe want to sit there and crank up some foolishness out there at the State of the Union, huh? Talking about how he want to give all these housing credits. Talking about how he want to do something to raise some of the values of the properties and all this other foolishness and take down the APRs. I miss them 1.3, 1.9 levels when Trump was in there. This man done created a problem and want to tell you he got a solution. Man, ain't nobody falling for your bullshit, Joe. And then you want to say if we get Donald Trump in there, it's going to mess up the progress that y'all making. Progress? Man, what progress? You talking about the progress of taking the country down the shithole? Yeah, nah, we good on that. We don't want that. Man can't even do a whole speech without mumbling and drunk babbling and mumbling. Joe, show ass up. UFC 300 did not disappoint me at all. Welcome back to the 1521 Corner, everybody. You know what's going down when Bruce Buffett hit that? It's time! Well, I ain't gonna lie, the most exciting fight that I saw that night, boy, was that Max Holloway and Justin Gaethje. Boy, them boy bumped the whole five rounds, then boy, Jay. Hey, goddamn Max, say, hey, come on, let's get on in the middle of the ring. Let's go and duke it out these last 10 seconds. Boy, them boy got to throw them thing. <laughs> that thing, you know, Gaethje knocked it out with one second left flat on his face, boy. Boy, Alex knocked Jamal ass out in the first round, boy. Hey, he hit him in the nuts. He like, nah, nah, ref, I got it. Knockout. Old wit for that, boy. Done daughter. He, you know, he kept it humble, though. He wasn't talking all that shit, but, man. It's some old shit that was going on, but I ain't got time to talk about it. Sit in, show ass up. What's going on, everybody? 
Welcome back to the 1521. What's going on, everybody? Welcome back to the 1521 corner. I've been seeing these videos with Diddy dropping these names, but I don't know how legit it is and what he doing it for. He got the little one up there shouting them out. Make sure you heard the name. Well, that's a lot of names on there. It's a lot of them that I ain't surprised that them been to the house. They even said they done been to the house. But, but that boy Diddy say he ain't going down by himself, isn't it? But it's amazing, though, because some of these folks I heard on them lists he talking about was on the Epstein list that everybody ain't really trying to get out there for real. Boy, I said they fuck around and unalive him. Boy, they already dry. He already gonna drop the dimes on everybody. Boy, did it say he ain't going? Shit, I ain't shocked at all though, man. You know some of these folks be doing some wild shit, man. When they get all this money, man, and there's certain statute of limitations to a lot of this shit. But man, these folks gonna hang your ass, bro. They gotta make an example out of somebody. He doing a typical shit. He ain't going down by himself. Did it said, "Cho ass up." What's going on? What's going on, everybody? I hope you enjoyed your Easter weekend. On another note, man, what's up with Joe Biden, man? This man here said that Easter was going to be Transgender Visibility Day. Man, what the hell, Joe? What, what, what you got going on, bro? Who put you up to this, man? Probably Obama. Y'all know Easter's supposed to be the Lord's Day, man, and, and, and it's already a whole lot of up and down about how this whole bunny rabbit nonsense foolishness even got started in the first place. It's deeper than what you think, and that take a longer video than this little short I'm trying to make. But on another note, so they saying the CEO of the Dolly that crashed into the bridge has died in a car accident where her Tesla reversed in the pond by itself. Man, if that ain't something to look into, I don't know what is. Until then, show ass up. What's going on? What's going on, everybody? Welcome back to the 1521 Corner. So we all seen the news about the bridge in Baltimore closing. Check this out, though. I want y'all to think about something. So it's a guy named Salvador Dali that wrote a book that's called The Bridge. Dolly was the name of the cargo ship that ran into the Francis Scott Key Bridge. Y'all do know Francis Scott Key, the one that created the national anthem, right? Coincidence? Uh, boy, if this ain't nothing for the conspiracy theorists to run with, man, it's still something to look into, man. Y'all gotta think about all that. Right now, it's only six people reported dead. You know, they found two of them, but apparently it was the workers that was on the bridge you know, prayers up to their families, you know what I'm saying? And another thing, too, that's a big hub for a lot of stuff that goes on the east coast of, of, the, of the United States, you know what I'm saying? So it might be a little shortage here and there, but y'all just stay safe, man. Until